there! It's day 7 of week 7 of 52 weeks of vlogging. This is the last day that the day and the week will be the same number for the whole rest of the year. And I began today by sleeping in and then wandering around for a couple hours wondering why everything just felt slightly weird until this happened. Oh man. What? It's daylight savings today. Which made me realize it was probably time I took down all the Christmas decorations for my front porch because March. So I proceeded to take down the Christmas decorations and roll them all up, all the while lamenting my lost hour because daylight savings really is stupid. Meanwhile realizing that we possibly have too many Christmas lights, especially when you include the inside ones. But back to why daylight savings is so stupid. But first, a little history. Daylight Savings was first proposed by Benjamin Franklin way back in 1784 in a letter he wrote to the editors of the Journal of Paris, explaining that if people would only get up earlier and then consequently go to bed earlier, they would make better use of the daylight hours, thus saving all the money that they spent on oil and candles in order to light their apartments and houses in the evenings. So it's important to remember two things. Firstly, in those days, oil and candles were really, really expensive. And secondly, Franklin was less interested in the idea of actually resetting clocks than in the general idea that we should maximize those daylight hours. So in his letter, he detailed some really creative ways of just making everybody get up earlier, like having church bells throughout the city ring at a certain time when the sun came up, or firing cannons. Needless to say, not everybody agreed with him. In fact, most people thought it was a stupid idea. They wanted to keep sleeping in to hell with energy efficiency. So the world continued with its wasteful ways for over 120 years, until an English guy named William Willis it came up with the idea of daylight savings time. William Willett was a fan of early morning exercise, so around 1907 he started making noise around Parliament about how many daylight hours were wasted by the general populace between the sun rising and people actually getting up. He was the first person to come up with a clear system. Every Sunday in April move clocks forward 20 more minutes until eventually we're getting up an hour and 20 minutes earlier than we were before and going to bed an hour and 20 minutes earlier than we were before. We use an hour and 20 minutes more daylight than we would have used otherwise. We save money on candles, we save money on oil, we save money on electric lighting. But as with Benjamin Franklin's proposal, everybody thought that was a dumb idea. It was complicated, it was confusing, nobody else was doing it. So of course nothing happened until World War I broke out and Germany instituted the first official daylight saving time in 1916 on April 30th. They moved clocks forward one hour and instead of spending all that energy on lighting homes, they were going to use it for the war effort. The UK and most of Europe quickly followed suit, and then the following year, Australia and two provinces in Canada, Newfoundland and Nova Scotia, joined in. And then the US finally got in the game in 1918. But it was short-lived. As soon as World War I ended, everybody went back to normal time. Until, you guessed it, World War II, when everybody decided that once again they needed to divert energy away from lighting and heating and towards bomb making. After World War II ended, the idea of time pretty much became a free-for-all, especially in the U.S. where each city was free to do as it liked, which led to a complete logistical nightmare for anyone who relied in any way on the railway system, which in those days was pretty much everybody, from postmen to railway workers to passengers to builders. This continued until 1966 when the Uniform Time Act instituted a clear, uniform, everybody does it, Here's how we do it, daylight savings time rule, except for Arizona, which continues to be an exception. Now in 1966, daylight savings was still basically an energy efficiency and standardization thing. It was about keeping everybody on the same time at the same time and saving a little bit of energy in the summer, maximizing daylight hours, and thus spending less energy on lighting and electricity for appliances in the evening time. And we still think about daylight savings time in terms of energy efficiency today. As recently as 2005, President Bush signed into law the Energy Efficiency Act, which extends daylight savings by a couple of weeks in either direction, so that instead of starting at the beginning of April and finishing at the end of October, it now starts at the beginning of March 
and finishes into November, which means we actually spend more than half the year living on a false time because the middle of the day is not actually the middle of the sun's arc across the sky. But does it even make sense to think about daylight savings that way anymore? If we just look at the issue of lighting, number one, we don't use the same kind of light bulbs anymore. The high energy incandescent light bulbs are replaced by really, really low energy, high efficiency light bulbs, which means that keeping them burning into the evening hours doesn't have quite the same impact as it used to. Additionally, we don't work on the nine to five schedule anymore. For example, take the Hubbles. His company has offices in Hong Kong, India, Switzerland, the US and Canada, which means that at any given time of the day, someone from his company is up and working at some point. Which also means that the Hubbles can be called on at literally any hour to work, but mostly his work from home is restricted to either early mornings or late evenings and sometimes on the weekend. What this means though is that because he's often working late in the evening or early in the morning, it doesn't matter what time the clocks say, whether the sun's up or down, he's still got to be on the job. And the availability of computers and cell phones and the internet makes this more and more frequent. Additionally, we have more and more people working from home and more and more people doing shift work. If you look at me, for example, I don't make my videos during the daytime when the kidlets are awake. I make my videos in the evening. It doesn't matter what the clocks say, if the sun's down, that's when I'm working because that's when my kids are in bed. Additionally, the proliferation of air conditioning has two impacts on energy efficiency when we think about daylight savings time. Number one, people who have air conditioning run it round the clock. If it's summertime, the air conditioner is on, which means daylight savings have has no impact on energy use in that sense. Number two, although daylight savings originally encouraged people to get outside after work and exercise or play or guard, now with video games, television, and air conditioning, people don't need to go outside to exercise, although I still think people should, which means that in the summer when it is really hot and really uncomfortable to be outside, it's actually nicer to stay in and again, run those lights and run those electronics. Not to mention the increased incidence of heart attacks during daylight savings time and the increased incidence of traffic accidents in the mornings during daylight savings time because the mornings are actually darker now. Plus, anybody who has kidlets totally knows why daylight savings time is a bad idea. I know you parents are on board with me on this one. What all this comes down to is that daylight savings doesn't actually save us anything. It screws up people's sleep schedules, it makes kids cranky, and because less than half of the world actually participates in daylight savings time, it takes that logistical nightmare that the railroads in the US had in the 40s and 50s and expands it globally to all the international businesses and companies that have to work across borders and across time zones every day. Once upon a time, daylight savings time was a really good idea, but it's had its day, so let's let it go. There's a petition gathering signatures to be sent to the White House. I encourage you to take a look. It's linked in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.